So today we will understand three different types of racks that is gravity, pushback and drive in racks. So we'll begin with gravity racks. So the gravity rack, the name itself implies that based on the gravity force, the racks storage system will be working on. So the loading is done from the one end in this gravity rack and the unloading is done from the another end. The pallets flow onto the rack based on the gravity. They are having rollers. They flow from one end to another as there is some of the inclination. So the forklift drops the part at one of the end. The part then moves due to the gravity force, rolls down to the another end and the forklift will be unloading it from the next end. So the part flow will be last first in first out basis. Then we have pushback rack system. In this pushback rack system, the advantages are that it will save the space. It has high efficacy. Basically, the working system is such that the forklift will be pushing the parts. The loading will be done from one end and the unloading will also be done from the same end. So whenever a part is brought from the forklift, the part will push the parts which are actually there in the rack behind and then while unloading the forklift will take the part which is available at the front most end. So the flow of the parts in pushback rack system takes place last in first out basis. Here also we are having the inclination of the rails in a rack but the loading and unloading takes place from only one side. Then we have drive in rack systems. The name itself implies that the forklift or the operator needs to drive inside the rack to load and unload. So if you see the forklifts uh, take the parts, drive inside a single aisle it, uh, into the rack, they will unload the part onto the rack. So the loading will be done by entering into this single aisle placing it perfectly onto the part and then while unloading also they will take last in first out basis because whichever part will be available at the most outer end that is face of the forklift that would be unloaded first and the parts which are at the extreme back will be unloaded at the last. So this is how drive-in works. We will look into the simulation model, how, what are the properties and how the modeling can be done. Hey guys, welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. Hello guys, welcome to the new video for warehousing that is rack modeling in FlexSim. So you have already seen different types of racks, standard gravity, pushback, drive-in. Now what we are going to look in is we are going to understand the properties related to rack which are present in the FlexSim and we are going to understand those in detail so that we can create this model. So the main objective in today's video will be to understand the modeling for the racks and to understand the properties related to racks and warehousing. So let's begin without wasting much time. The This model will look exactly the same at the end of the video once we have completed understanding the modeling steps. So let's begin. So let's begin our modeling. So initially what we are going to do is we are going to drag the source into the modeling background. Then we will drag the rack. Then we will drag this operator onto the place and then we will drag the buffers. So we will have two buffers. I'll copy paste another buffer at the end of this rack area. And what is our flow is we are going to transfer the boxes from this source which are being generated every two seconds will be transferred to this buffer named Q1 and from this Q we are going to store it into the racks and then those will be transferred to this Q and what we are going to do is we are going to use this operator for transferring it so I'm going to use this transporter for this buffer and we'll also use this operator to transfer the material from the racks to the Q so this is the base modeling which is created. I'll just reset and run and we'll see this operator is running, putting the parts into the rack and this is all about storage. So the racks basically comes into the category of warehousing into the FlexSim object and what we can do is we can drag these racks onto the FlexSim modeling. 
in the rack types we are going to have these four types of racks whichever as per our requirement we can use them for our modeling so we have standard gravity flow pushback and drive-in racks we also have floor storage racks so we will not have z axis for those racks so we'll have all the storage happening on the flooring that is floor storage so we'll understand the properties for the rack now i will stop the model and what we will do is we'll understand step by step what are the properties we are having for rack as object so we have similar statistics we have visual tab we are having the label tab just like we had it for in the conveyors task executors and the fixed resource so now what we are going to do is we are going to look for another tab so this is the property window only available for the racks that is storage object so the first thing which we have here is edit dimensions so this is for this particular rack so you can see this red color so the one two three four five these are the base so the number of base you can change it if i make it 10 you would be able to see those getting changed onto our rack into the model then the levels are basically these rows these heights different heights so you can see this green colors the numbering here is also in the green color so you can change this from six to eight as per requirement and you can see that has been happening here into the model also so what i will do for the sake of simplicity i'll make that to six six and then we will have these slots per bay so these are basically these slots we, the, basically we can break down this red color one and green color one into multiple bays so this is a one bay we can split it into the slots the bay is basically the what we can say the discrete uh, breakups of the slots so you can change this to five what does this is going to do is this is the complete bay this is the level and we have the slots per bay so we have break down this bay into five slots so this is you can modify it depending on your requirement i am keeping only one slot per bay you can change it as per your requirement here we are having this checkbox storable slots now as we have checked this all so all the boxes or all these spaces are to be the storable slots if we uncheck this what does this mean is we do not have anything for storage so we cannot store the parts in this racks now if you check this if you check this what does this mean is you will be able to store the parts only in this areas and whichever areas are into the crossed section you cannot store the parts onto those areas so what i'll do is i'll select all as a storable slots then we have another property where we can adjust the bay width level heights slot width then we have another window for slot padding now what does the slot padding mean slot padding means this is the slot you are able to see correct now if you see this the boxes are fitted on edge to edge so for each slot you can define the uh, distance from the edges so that this box will be placed this way if you see this this is now the offset from the edges so this is the padding so you can give the padding from six directions for a slot so all six directions that is top bottom left right front back you can give the padding so there will be the spaces between the edges of the slots and the flow item which is going to be placed so that is basically the slot padding so we have understood what are edit dimensions properties into the storage object then we have visualization tab you have different types of visualizations you can use you can put that as per requirement normally we use visualization for racks only 